All right, so I'm working on my instrument instructor rating right now, and I found a free download from Garmin. I'll leave a link in the description for you guys. Uh, pretty awesome little program, works good. It's uh, about five gigs total, should work on any computer, including a laptop. Uh, it's a pretty simple little program. Um, basically, we're gonna use the GPS unit that we wanna use. If I select a negative here, it's gonna give me a few more choices. Uh, GPS 175 all the way up to the 750, which I prefer, but we're going to use the 650 today because that's what I've got installed in the training aircraft that I fly occasionally um, at work. And then we've got the display unit here. I'm going to go to the GDU 1060. I wish we had those. And then uh, single engine pistons, what we're going to use just a Cessna 172 is kind of what we're, you know, maybe a 182, it doesn't matter but we're just simulating that. And then you have piston multi-engine, piston single-engine turboprop, or sorry, single-engine turboprop, and then rotocraft. Uh, a few things will change depending on which one you pick. Uh, I noticed the, I think the turboprop had another VOR, but no signal for it, so, because I didn't have two database or navigation units. So, uh, might be some differences there. single engine is all we're gonna use for today. Settings, I can change my Database from Jepson to Garmin. I'm just going to leave it on Jepson. And then manuals, you can go down here and look up the 650 cockpit reference guide or the pilot's guide. Pilot's guide is going to tell you how to do everything. It's pretty awesome. Uh, lots of pictures. Uh, they've got online resources also, so you can figure out how the trainer works, that kind of thing. Uh, let's go back up to avionics, and let's power this thing on. All right. Brings up our three units here. We've got our 1060 display screen. This is not for navigation. Uh, it actually just missed a screen for some reason. It should have started in the database screen uh, right there. It's been doing that occasionally for me. Not a big deal. All it's going to ask you is if, are the databases good and they weren't so it doesn't matter anyway. And this will bring us to this page here. Uh, for now we're just going to close that out. And that gives us our main flight display here. We're gonna kill the advisory. It's just telling us we're in training mode and that's now gone. And let's go work on our 650 to start with. So this is our primary navigation unit and it's gonna have the demo little logo up here. That's not normally on there. As you start up, it'll come to this page right here. So currently installed databases, it's gonna show all these and if they're expired, they should be in yellow. Uh, these aren't showing that, something they just, change for the training software, I guess. So continue. This is your instrument panel self-test. You're gonna have an actual VOR possibly located in your instrument panel. That's gonna be testing that that's hooked up to your GPS unit. So your needle should be half left right now and the flag should be out of view. The glide slope should be half up and the flag should be out of view. And then two from it should be two. And the OBS should be 150. I turn the OBS knob on the navigation unit and that'll change right here. I wanna make sure those two match up. Uh, all right, that looks good. I can also do fuel on board, so I can put this to like 40, fuel burn will be 10.1. That'll give me a fuel burn estimate. It does not have anything to do with the fuel that I'm seeing on the PDF screen. So continue there. Brings me up to my main page here, and that's my home page. And at this point, I wanna hit this message button and kill that message. Taz, system test, okay. So the TAS is working fine, thank you. And then now we can go ahead and put in a waypoint here. So we're gonna shoot the approach into KTIW while I'm talking. Uh, I'm just gonna go over the basics of this unit. I'm not gonna show you how to shoot the approach, but here I'm gonna set up FAVDU, F-A-V-D-U. So F-A-V-D-U, and it's a waypoint, shows that right there, hit enter. And it's now moved my plane to FAVDU. You probably started on KSLE or whatever it is for Salem. Uh, we've also, see these are grayed out right here, the airspeed, the track mode, and the altitude. Uh, I wish these were accessible because the manual track mode is kind of handy, uh, but they're not. Uh, we don't have any failures we can do here. We do have failures on the PDF though that we can simulate. So we're up and going there. Let's load up the procedure real quick here so I can get it running for you guys. Uh, closest airport will come up. I don't want that one. I want KT. IW, and I want the ILS-17, and I'll just do vectors because I'm straight out from it. Load the approach, and it's now flying that. So I can go back, go to my map button, and it'll now start flying that. It's headed the direct 
direction and everything. So uh, let's go back to the 1060. Actually, let's go to the scene here. So as you can see, I'm not moving and I'm still on the ground. So let's go ahead and put us up to 2,000 feet. 2,000 feet, and let's put our airspeed up to, let's just do like 190 knots. That's twice the speed I actually want. I'd normally be doing this about 90 knots. Once I come across the uh, final approach fix, I drop in my flaps and speed it up, or, uh, and slow it down, sorry. All right, so we're coming in there, and we're on the nav button, and I also want to hit the glide slope button, so it'll grab glide slope as it comes in. And if we go over to our 1060, Right now it's blinking at me. This is my $200 button. It's telling me that I need to be on localizer. That's pretty handy. That is a setting you can set. So let's go look and set, set that. So HSI setup, uh, no, nope. PFD setup. Localizer CDI prompting. That's what that was doing right there. Make sure you have that selected. That's pretty handy. Because um, in this autopilot, it doesn't matter what I have it on. It's going to still fly it just fine with GPS because it's following the flight plan. One thing I don't like about this app uh, versus right now it's on the localizer. It's still just going to fly the flight plan. It's not actually flying the localizer needle. Um, if you had it in manual flight, it would do that, but I haven't figured out a way to do that. Uh, the trainer won't shut down. So we've got our heading bug right here. Let's go ahead and sync that up. So heading bug, sync it, goes to 171. I can come over here and I can put in whatever I want and enter it, and it'll move it to wherever it is. My course heading here is set at 171. That was set up by loading the approach. It changed it to 171. I can change it to whatever I want, though, and it'll fly it. Uh, all right. Then we have our heading right here, 171. We're inbound, and you can see the little green needle here is pointing inbound. If you don't like this view, you can switch it, but I like this map view. Click on it. Finger up, finger down, it's going to zoom in, zoom out. It tells you how far it's zoomed in. We can come over here to HSI Setup, and we can turn it off so it looks old school. So here's the needle, and it's pointed that way. I'm going inbound on the localizer for ITW. But I have all that information right here also. So, And you can see glide slope starting to come in. So I like the HSI map myself. We'll go back here. Uh, we've got a timer here we need to set at some point, so it's in clock mode when it starts. I want to put it in timer mode. I don't like how this blocks my GPS information. They should have put this right up here. So I'm going to hit start when I come across the uh, waypoint. I can do that right now. It's a little early, but it doesn't matter. I'm going way too fast anyway. Um, we've got our... Altitude tape right here, so if I want to sync that airspeed, I can hit that. It's going to give me a little blue indicator of what airspeed I'm looking to hold. Try not to speed up from that. And then here I have my altitude at 2,000, which I'm going to leave there in this case because that's my missed approach altitude. So uh, we can go set a barrel minimum. So that is going to be... someplace. <laughs> I do not, oh, minimums, yeah, right underneath minimums. Uh, we'll put 500 feet in there. Oops, just 500. Enter, and now you can see that our barrel minimum is right there showing us what our, we're going down for this approach. All right, uh, we've got our angle of bank right here. So here's 10 degrees, 20 degrees, 30 degrees. I'll just go ahead and swing it over here in heading mode for a second. Now you can see I'm in a bit of a bank. It's coming over. I'll put it back in the nav. It's going to go back that way. And my it lost my glide slope because I did that. So uh, I can put this down to 500 feet. I'll kill my glide slope and just go to 500. And we can do our nav over to the other way. So I can go ahead and click it over. And you'll see here's my ball. So step on the ball, any more right rudder to make that triangle go back to normal. It's freaking out as I'm shooting this approach. And then here's my standard rate turn. So there's half standard rate. This is full standard rate. This is where I'm going to be in six seconds. 500. So if I look down here, it's now moving 
right there to six seconds. So my heading is six seconds out when it's right or is when it's at the end of the the uh, magenta line. All right, and I better go mist here. So I'm gonna go ahead and look at my other screen. So here's my scene. It's now telling me to go mist. I'm gonna hit activate the mist. It's gonna start climbing. I'm going for 2,000 feet. And it's on the nav mode, so it'll get itself figured out as it goes. Uh, I can go ahead and sync that heading up again. And you can also use these controllers here. Notice it syncs through those, so these little buttons right here, you can go through all those. And then you can set those as desired as you fly. So, um, what else should we go over here? That's real interesting. Uh, so six seconds, I'm going to be at a thousand feet. So one one thousand, two one thousand, three one thousand, four one thousand, five one thousand, six one thousand. It'll be right there. That's what that little line there is telling me. Uh, it's telling me I'm off of my altitude. So let's put that at two thousand. Vertical speed, I can set that if I want to. It's right here. We're at 900 feet vertical speed right now. We're going for 2,000, and we're at 1,220 feet, 20 foot increments. Uh, I think that's all you need to know to get yourself started. Thanks for watching. I will shoot the whole approach next time, and I'll even brief one, show you how to do that. Um, but right now we're on the missed approach. It'll all fly itself. It's going to make a turn shortly here and head us back for sin and hold. So excellent. Thanks for watching. Subscribe and like, please.